Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwanter and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today we have the pleasure of meeting with Chris Cabrera, founder and CEO of Exactly. Welcome, Chris. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Gerhard. Always great to talk with you. Likewise. So we are here at Dreamforce and uh, I'd like to know, what is new and exciting about Exactly? Well, there's a lot of exciting stuff happening here at Dreamforce. You know, this is our, we launched the company here almost nine years ago. So it's been, uh, been a long run and it's been very exciting. A lot of big announcements, 130,000 people. So it's just incredible to see it grow and grow. And of course, today we announced our uh, the Salesforce One, uh, being part of the Salesforce One initiative. And so we're very excited about that. And I think that's uh, fits right into our our mobile strategy. And and so we're uh, you know really pleased about that. And you were mentioned at a keynote by Parker Harris, <coughs> who talked about Salesforce One and, and exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting to you know to get the plug, and uh, you know it, it's important to be part of that program. And you know while it while I think the Salesforce One will ultimately have obviously tons and tons of partners. You know we were one of the first to get on, and and we've been working behind the scenes with them on that. And and uh, you know so it's exciting to see that come to fruition and see it on right. stage in front of all the people. So yeah, it was great. And if you allow me, there's uh, another item that's very, very exciting. And when you look at uh, Chris Cabrera, he, he wears a pin. <laughs> and uh, that is actually a symbol for his new book, Game the Plant. Uh, what made you decide to write this? Well, a lot of reasons. You know, it's been on my bucket list to write a book for a long time. And uh, I can't take all the credit. You know, the team effort to, to write something like this, as you know, having written books. Um, but it's something where, you know, one of the things we struggle with is is educating CFOs and VPs of sales that there's a better way to handle compensation. And so we thought about, you know, let's 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 write a book that will kind of allow them to sort of get some idea grenades and be thinking about different ways to maybe handle compensation. And, uh, you know, the, the, the best scenario for me is a, is a CFO or a VP of sales buys us at an airport, reads it on a flight, and then hands it to their, you know, their sales ops or comp person and says, go, go check this out, right? You right. know, then that's kind of the impetus for the book. Yeah. So there, there's one, and I, I bookmark this, uh, that, that's really interesting. Um, time is currency. Um, and you talk about motivation. Uh, explain that concept of moving compensation management into the real time frame. Well, you know, so many companies, you know, uh, there's 13 and a half million salespeople just in the U.S. who are paid like $800 billion in comp. And by, you know, most estimates, you know, 92% of it's done in Excel. And so that creates a, a time drain on salespeople because they're paid, they're not paid uh, always on time, the visibility is not, not really there, they can't see it in any kind of real time, they can't pick up their iPhone and see how they're being paid or even see how much they could earn before they close a deal. And so the timing of this is very important. When you think about the amount of dollars that companies spend in compensation, uh, it's a big number, right? And so if you aren't going to be able to put it up in the face of the salespeople, wherever they are in the world, in their local currency and language, then you're really not driving the most behaviors. And so we talk a lot about that in the book, give a lot of examples of companies that uh, you know move from annual plans to quarterly or quarterly to monthly, and the data shows, and we talk a lot about the data in the book, that uh, you know monthly is better than quarterly, and quarterly is better than annually. And, and when we say to companies, why do you pay this way? It's generally because they're the, the lack of systems and, and they're hamstrung by the inability right. rather right. than the desire right. uh, to motivate the teams. Right. And, and there's another issue uh, for you in the audience. You probably use Salesforce.com and there's always an issue with adoption. Now, how can a good compensation plan or management system have an impact on user adoption? Well, that's a great question. And being here at, at, at you know, Dreamforce, you know, where you're talking about so many companies that are using CRM, uh, you know, and we've all, we love CRM and we love using Salesforce, but it's sometimes hard to get the sales reps to log in all the time. And it's, all, you know, oftentimes hard to get them to put the right data in and the right exact amounts. And uh, that's a great frustration of all sales leaders. And uh, the thing when you introduce comp into Salesforce's CRM, uh, it, it really creates a a win 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 where the, it's good for the rep, it's good for the, everybody to, to 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 enter those deals in, make them more accurate, so they can see how they're accurately being paid. And uh, we've had many many companies say to us, uh, we have dramatically improved the adoption of our teams to using CRM, so, uh, Salesforce CRM, by putting associating the compensation piece right. into it. So they really fit you know hand in right. hand. So, um, I recently heard a, a presentation about the necessity for aligning the corporate culture with the corporate strategy 
uh, with talent and compensation. Um, does compensation management, the way you know it, have an impact actually on the corporate culture? Well, of course. I mean, comp at the end of the day, what I think people um, amazingly sort of miss is that comp is about behavior. It's about driving the behaviors. And so it absolutely represents the behavioral culture that you're trying to, to instill in a company. But to be fair, a lot of times, and most times, and rightly so, comp plans are more tactical. They're more designed to drive a behavioral thing, make more calls, discount less, sell fries with a shake, um, which are less to do about the culture per se. And so, you know, we, we're not proponents of necessarily using comp to drive culture. Um, you know, there's other ways to drive culture, and we've talked about them in the past. But um, so th th there's probably some linkages there. But I mean, I think generally speaking, I, I would say comp is more tactical. So um, you have now how many customers? Geez, you know, it's 600? at least 500. I think it's over 600 now. Yeah. And how many currencies do you compensate? I believe the latest number I heard was uh, over 60 different currencies and 18 different languages. So about uh, a little over 25% of our uh, base of customers, uh, the people we pay incentivize, are outside the U.S. Right. So uh, how does it differentiate between, you know, the big companies, enterprise companies that uh, compensate globally versus the smaller company? Are there two different solutions for that? We have a force.com product for the, uh, called Express and Cent Express, which is for the low end. And uh, the SMB market really kind of sub 50 uh, salespeople or people being incentivized. And then we have our enterprise app, which is uh, all works through the platform and you know the uh, Salesforce One that we announced today. Uh, and that goes from 50 reps to you know unlimited. What's the biggest client? How many seats? Uh, we're into you know thousands and thousands and thousands. So uh, we don't really give the specific numbers. Right. But big. Right. Yeah. You know, our customers are people like GE and Bank of America and Xerox and right. you know Siemens and some pretty uh, LinkedIn and, and of course Salesforce themselves. Right. So let's say I have a small company with about 30 salespeople. Um, how long does it take me to uh, change over from Excel spreadsheets to exactly? And how long until I get ROI? Yeah. Well, you know, it's, the good news is it's not very long. I mean, this is not a big, heavy-duty, you know, implementation. I think, you know, if you're talking a, a, a sub-50 person sales force, you know, we have customers that go live in, you know, a number of weeks, you know. Uh, and they're seeing ROI immediately because they're changing the behavior of their teams. Um, one of the things that we are big proponents of, and uh, you know, uh, we've talked about over the years, you know, our, our tagline as a company is Incent Right. So it, what we try to do is get companies not to just pave the cow paths. Don't just automate the way you've always done it. Let us help you design better plans. And that's when the ROI thing really kicks in. Because if people will listen to us, and especially now that we have all this data, this empirical evidence to say, you know, don't necessarily listen to us, listen to the data that says pay this way or pay that way. Uh, you start to do that, you make these kind of tweaks to the plans and the things that you're motivating on, and you can dramatically affect even a 50-person sales force. I mean, if you imagine if you could change the discounting behavior of 50 people, you know, that's your entire sales force, that can have a dramatic effect on, uh, on the company like that. So when is your new comp cloud, your next uh, in 2014, is that in May? It's in May, yeah, uh, in San Francisco at the Hyatt, uh, which is one of our customers. Um, all the people at Hyatt are paid through exactly, so we're, we do business with our customers, and so we're, uh, we're doing it there in the Hyatt. That's uh, a mini dream for us, and you have about, what, seven, 800 people at this next event? Yeah, yeah, it won't be quite the size of this, but right. uh, it's a little more intimate. Um, but you know we have great customers, and, and it's really a learning you know ability for customers to meet other customers and, and talk about the challenges. Right. One of the things that's weird, interesting about comp, but not weird, but uh, I mean, people don't recognize it is everyone thinks they're unique. Everyone thinks you know oh I'm, nobody pays like me. Right. And what's amazing is how I can hear you know from somebody how they're doing and what they're challenged with. And I can literally say, you know what, you sound exactly like this other company that's not even in your industry, you know, but yet they're dealing with the same challenges right. you're dealing right. with. And so there's totally. learnings there, right. and we put them all together and try to get them to share those. those so those. while uh, Mark Benioff is all about dream force, uh, and Chris Cabrera is all about reality force, and <laughs> helping uh, companies improve their business reality, which is the bottom line. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks again. Congratulations to the book. Thank uh, you. Go to Amazon.com and learn how to game the plan.